All right, so it's been a number of years since I did a video on the Zud Bubbler, and I've made a few updates to it since then, so I thought I'd make a new video. Uh, one update is the brand hook I use. I used to use uh, uh, the TMCs, and then I went to Daiichi's, and now I'm, I found that the uh, A-Rex is my favorite, and this particular A-Rex is the PR330 Aberdeen Predator. It's the 4-aught, which I think is the ideal size for the Zud Bubbler. It's got a nice wide gap, and it's the right length, and it's got a good strong hook. So, what we do is we take the uh, Zud Bubbler body, which is available on BoneyardFlyGear.com, and it comes like this. It comes in lots of different colors, but the first thing we're going to do is take our leg puller. This is the Zuddy's leg puller from Hairline, available at most fly shops. And we're going to start at the back, just the back center of the popper. We're going to do the texture side down, and we're going to poke that all the way through to the front lower center, about like that. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but I definitely like it lower center versus in the middle or higher. And once we have a hole in there, then we can easily put it over the eye of the hook and get it in place. Now this is just temporary. We're going to move this again at some point. So what we're going to do is uh, take our thread and this is also another important thing. I'm using the Unithread 3 aught, and uh, yeah, you can see it right there. And that's very purposeful as well. The three aught or the unithread in general is going to soak the super glue adhesive really well into the thread and glue our body on good. And it also is a good idea to use a thicker thread like the three aught, so it's easier to build a thread base instead of like a six aught. So I'm going to start right here behind the popper body with my thread, and that is the whole reason I put the popper body on. Because I am going to take it back off, but I put it on there so I know where my my body's going to end up, so no materials are going to come in front of that. Okay, so I've got the thread securely on the hook. I left about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch behind the body to where this is dangling, and I'm going to pull this off and set it aside for a minute. Now I'm going to grab a piece of marabou. This is a piece of select marabou, but really any marabou will do. And I'm going to take just the back end of it here. So just however long I want that tail to be. And this is, I'm going to say, two, two and a half inches at the most. And I'm going to clip this off right there. Throw the excess away. I'm only using the back end of this. So I'm going to put this here so it doesn't come any farther forward of where that thread is, which indicates where the back of the popper body is going to be. So I'm going to tie that in securely, and I'm only going to go back as far as however much hackle I want on here. So typically it's going to be maybe a quarter to three-eighths of an inch of hackle. So wind that on forward, and then I'm going to wind it back forward here back to where my the end of my body is and then we'll go back up just kind of to the middle of that just to make sure that the marabou is really secure not going to go anywhere now I'm going to take some rubber legs these are actually silicone rubber legs I think they're the barred um, silicone legs from hairline I'm just clipping one side off that so I got all the danglies here and I'm going to grab three of those legs, just clipping them off here. I'm going to put those around my thread like this. And then I'm just going to secure all those to one side of the hook and then just clip those off kind of short. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side. Just grabbing three, so we'll end up with a total of six legs hanging off 
as back legs, but because I'm folding them over the thread, it doubles that three and makes six. So I get that securely down and then just clip those off sharp. About like that. And then I'm gonna go back up to about the middle of that hump right there again. And I'm gonna grab two schloppen feathers. You can use any color. I almost always use the black, kind of the, the glossy, really iridescent black schloppen feathers. And uh, I'm gonna marry those together. So by marrying, I mean I'm putting one feather on top of the other, kind of making it look like one feather. And then I'm gonna strip back some feathers to create a nice tie-in point here. So about like that. Clip that off short. And I've got the cupped end facing away from me as I tie these on as though it's one feather. So both stems are just married together. Get that securely in place. And now I can come back onto that bare part of the hook and just really make sure these are secure. Now I'm gonna go back all the way back to the end of my materials here. I'm gonna grab a little bit of peacock black ice stub. You can use any color really. I, I just try to stick with that iridescent black for the hackle part there. So get some of that dubbed onto the thread and Wind that forward to where the body will end up, right there. All right, so now these feathers can be placed together. We'll strip all of these hairs back a little bit. And the key to getting this started right is to turn it that way and start winding. Then it should pretty much stay in that position. So we'll palmer that forward through the ice dub. And we'll probably go around three or four times. Palmering nice and close together. I like a lot of hackle on a popper, which is why we marry the schloppen feathers together because you can really get a lot more bulk rather than just doing one feather. All right, and then I'm gonna go a couple wraps in front of that kind of the mound of materials there. So the body is actually gonna go right up to these. We'll go one more wrap here. And then one wrap around with the thread. Secure that in place with a few winds and then we can clip that off short. Now I'm gonna pull those hackle feathers back and we can start building up a good thread base at this point. So we'll get it all wound down good at the back there. This is probably the most tedious part of the whole Zud Bubbler or any foam popper is you really, really need to get a good thread base. I can't overemphasize that enough. If you don't have a good thread base, doesn't matter how much glue you use on the popper body, it's eventually going to come loose and spin around the hook. But if you take your time and do a good thread base, you will never ever have that problem. So this is why we're using the 3 aught thread versus 6 aught because 6 aught would take twice as long to build up a good thread base. And when I think I have enough, I'm going to go just a little bit more. Alright, so we're getting about where I like to have it. Alright, so about like that, no need to whip finish because we're going to super glue it anyways. Just a couple half hitches just to hold the thread securely while you're uh, getting things done here. Okay, like that. At this point, I typically will take my flea comb, comb through that hackle, or you can just tink the hook like that and that'll kind of make break everything up and splay everything out good. All right, for the super glue part, I'm just using Gorilla Glue super glue. You can use a gel or just a regular super glue, doesn't really matter, they all work. I'm gonna put a generous amount, especially towards the front here. And then when we put our body on, 
We're gonna slide that on and we're gonna spin it. Almost like we're, we're putting a screw in with a screwdriver, spinning it all the way back so it ends up all in there really good. And then at this point, I'm going to immediately pull it out of the vise before the glue dries. I'm gonna look straight down it with one eye, make sure that hook is perfectly perpendicular to the popper body, and it is. So at this point, I'm gonna set this one aside for a few minutes, let the glue dry up, and I'll tie another one in between now and then usually. And then once this glue is dried, I'll show you how to put the legs through the body. Okay, so now we've given this a couple minutes to let the body dry. It's not going anywhere now, it's super solid. We're gonna go back to our Zuddy's leg puller here. And if you look close, you can see it's got a little eye and it's got a sharp point. So I came up with this idea years ago because before that I always had to poke, the, poke a bodkin through the fly, pull that out, and then poke a thread puller through there, hoping you get it through the same hole, and then pull your legs through. Where this accomplishes that with just one in and out. So we're gonna start, typically I'm doing a cross uh, pattern in here. So I'm gonna start at the front of the body, kinda right there, and I'm gonna poke it at an angle so it comes out towards the back. So like that. And that's gonna give me a good cross pattern. So some of those legs are gonna face forward and some of them are gonna face backwards. So I'm gonna set this down for just a second. I'm gonna grab the rubber legs and typically I used to glue them, I used to glue the legs in, but I have figured out that as long as you do enough rubber legs, you don't have to glue them. The foam will compress on top of those legs. So I'm gonna cut off four legs, and that's usually the ticket, four legs. Any more than that, it's gonna be tough to get through this hole on the leg puller, and any less than that, they could slide in and out of the body. So we're gonna slide those uh, right through the hole So they're just poking out just a little bit, and that's all you need. Now I'm just gonna pull that leg puller through. So you can see they're just starting to suck into the body there. I'm gonna pull those all the way through, and then the leg puller's just gonna pop loose. But I can grab those now with my fingertips, pull them through a little farther. We're gonna do the same thing on this side. Start at the front of the body. You might feel the hook in there at some point. Just go either under it or over it, doesn't really matter, as long as you come out in the right spot. And we're gonna grab four more legs. Just cutting four more legs off of our leg patch there. And we're gonna put those in the same way. We're really just going to get it started. I maybe have a quarter inch poking through there is all. And that's just enough to pull them through. The leg puller will break free, but we have enough poking out there now that we can grab those with our fingers, pull them out to our desired length. And then at this point, I'm gonna clip them off a little bit short. They're not gonna be full length. I don't want crazy long legs, just enough to make it look froggy. And then I'll trim them off on the other side. And that's it. That's all there is to the Zud Bubbler. You know, if you want, you could take a Sharpie and make dots all over it. You could put eyes on it, anything you want at that point. But really, that's all I ever use. I fish with it just like that. Um, the only thing I might do sometimes is take a Sharpie and just rub over the top, top of the texture here just to break up the solid pattern. And I think that makes a difference sometimes. But Lots of different color, I mean it's endless color combinations you can do on this fly. And poppers are just fun to tie. So there it is, that's the Zud Bubbler.